Hello everyone, it's your bud. Today we're going to be talking about the Red Lotus, a suggestion by a subscriber, Fried Egg. Thanks for the idea. I get so wrapped up in my own head that I forget about all the options that I have to choose from. Now, for those who do not know about Avatar, which, really? I mean, come on? But still, for those who do not know about Avatar, The Last Airbender is a show about Aang, the actual last airbender fighting against the Fire Nation alongside his Earth Nation and Water Nation friends, even winning over some of the Fire Nation to his side. And everything from here on out is a complete spoiler for everything in Avatar The Last Airbender and Korra. Really, I am super serious here. I just finished the script and it's basically a history lesson of the world of Avatar. I'm not joking. I cover so much that you'll want to see for yourself first instead of hearing it from some person on the internet telling you about it. But if you have watched Avatar or Korra as many times as I have, then there is so much to discuss. So let's do this. So the bending part of the name Avatar is the ability to control the specific element, fire, water, earth, and air, each having their own needs and requirements for mastery and for bringing out the greatest amount of power. In the sequel to the Avatar series, titled Korra, there is a powerful group of anarchists whose ideas are frowned upon by many who keep the balance. Oh, and duh, I guess I should have mentioned the Avatar. The Avatar is the bridge between the spirit world and the physical world. The spirit world is a separate and reachable plane of existence for those with proper spiritual training. Oh, and you can only like send your spirit there. You, c you don't get to it physically. It is the avatar's duty to maintain balance and as such, the Red Lotus are an opposing faction to the avatar as well. At least the current avatar, Korra. Originally in the ancient past, the spirit world and physical world existed as one, with the wilderness of the world belonging to the spirits and nature as the spirits were many times guardians over specific plants, beings, or natural phenomenons. This was the ancient world that the first avatar, Wan, was born into. He grew up in the human city, not carved out of the wild as humans live now, but instead on the back of the gigantic lion turtle, a majestic and powerful beast, perhaps the most elementally powerful, not a spirit, but a living creature of unknown lifespan power level, or anything else. All it is known is that it chose to let humans live upon its back. Where humans originated from in the Avatar world is unknown. Wan despised his city, its rigid laws, and the separation of man from nature, eventually going on an excursion for supplies with the sole purpose of gaining the gift he would get from it. For the Lion Turtle knew that humans could not survive in the wild, so it provided them a home. Yet the humans had to forage and hunt, and when they would leave, the lion turtle would gift each of them with the power of the element, the power of fire. After some back and forth with the lion turtle and the humans, with the realization of his intent and a few of his actions, he became banished. Though the lion turtle let him keep his power to survive in the wild, the lion turtle set Juan on a path that would shape the entire world. In his exile, he managed to befriend creatures of nature and the spirits who protected them, winning their trust over a long and arduous beginning, many times almost losing his life to the wilderness or to the quick and flighted emotions of the spirits. Eventually though, after gaining their trust, he was mocked for wanting their friendship. The spirits kept asking him why he did not go to his people. After explaining his exile, the spirits kept looking confused. They responded by saying, why not go to another lion turtle? Shocked, Juan asked all he could learn, and learned that his home was not the only one. Journeying on a pilgrimage to the other lion turtles, he mastered all elements, and as such was the first human to have such a powerful and close connection to nature and elements. And his exile had made him friend to the spirits. When the many humans who had met Juan over his travels were inspired by him, they left the lion turtles too, each gifted the power of an element by their respective lion turtle. And though this is a seemingly positive thing, they had not the connection to nature and spirits and did what humans do. Remember, this was the first time humans came down from their homes and kingdoms on the lion turtle's back and made their way into the world, making room in the world for themselves first and foremost using fire to raise the forest, 
Water to flood and wash away the spirits' homes. Earth to mold nature into forms they desired, no matter who once lived there. And reaching even into the sky with their power of air, intruding on so many different spirits' homes, and wreaking havoc on the spirits, who in turn were preparing for war with the humans. And yet, to know why the humans and spirits were so enraged beyond normal, we must go back even further to the first struggle, the eternal struggle, light and dark, or Rava and Vatu, a struggle that should have had no end, as there would never be a being to interfere in the balance until man made its way into the world. In his travels, Juan did not just master the four elements for his own selfish desire for power. No, he came upon Vatu and Rava in their great struggle, clashing and battling, Vatu begging for the human's help whilst Rava warned him not to interfere. Yet Juan could not stand by and intervened, breaking Rava's grasp over Vatu, Vatu thanking Juan for releasing him and flying off. Soon after, Juan began to learn the truth. When Vatu grows more powerful, Rava grows less so, and taking responsibility, he swore to right his wrongs, traveling to the lion turtles and gaining the elements to aid Rava in their fight. At the pivotal battle between Vatu and Rava, Juan was there beside Rava to give aid and to be backup. Fighting beside each other, they brought Vatu under their control and then sealed him into a great tree forever to be imprisoned. This act cost Rava her physical form, and having no body, she would have perished. Instead, Juan allowed her to merge with him to become the first avatar, the arrow on the avatar being Rava, and reincarnating into the next avatar's physical form to forever share a body. And it was at this point that Juan the first avatar separated the physical and spirit worlds, closing their portals, and all the humans left the lion turtles to live as the fire, earth, water, and air nations. And now the red lotus seek to upset the balance that has occurred ever since. They wish to bring the physical and spirit worlds into contact once more, making them one under control of the ever-hungering Vatu, as the balance that has been held is a lie. Really, Vatu is imprisoned, and Rava holds mastery over the world. Despite being limited to sharing a form with the Avatar, it is not balance, but the will of beings to keep the world as it is. And the Avatar's duty is really just an ancient decision that might hold relevance no more. Wow, I mean, that was a really big intro into this topic. I haven't even talked about the people I wanted to yet. There, I thought, okay, I'll just do a little video on the four cool people in the Red Lotus, but nope, you have to talk about everything. Talking about the Red Lotus means talking about the entire history of Avatar and Korra. The name of the Red Lotus comes from the organization they splintered off from known as the White Lotus, one of my personal favorite fictional organizations ever. I will save them for another video, but those who fought differently within their ranks were exiled from the Order and reformed into their own, called the Red Lotus. And though thought defeated or destroyed, the will of the Red Lotus lingers still. In a mountain jail, a powerful man was imprisoned. After his first attempt to manifest the will of the Red Lotus failed, this man named Zaheer spent his imprisonment meditating, focused on the will of the Red Lotus, and yet one other thing. And during harmonic conversions when the spirit world and physical world were closest, something happened to him that happened to no others before. Zaheer gained the power of airbending. Through extreme willpower, meditation, and the connection with the spirit worlds that was strengthened so by harmonic convergence. Becoming the first human that I'm aware of to gain a bending power without being born with it. This was the first bending power not passed down from the lion turtles through human lineage. The start of a new culture of airbenders. Quickly learning to control his powers and escaping, Zaheer went straight for the other prisons to free his allies who were also caught in their previous failures. First to his friend Gazan, who Zaheer gave some earth to, and Gazan spun it into a lava buzzsaw, cutting through his prison of wood, as a stone prison would not work on him. Together they then went to Mingwa's volcanic prison, where they freed the armless waterbender. Seeing her shape water into long whips that took the place of arms that she could use for traversal, attacking, or grasping things, 
also seen freezing the water to make ice, and then they travel to free their final companion. Now, as I mentioned, there's air, water, fire, and earth bending, and lava bending is an extension of fire bending. But there's yet another fire bending adjacent power, combustion bending. First seen with Sparky Sparky Boom Man, the assassin sent to kill the Avatar by Prince Zuko, and seen used for a second time by the character Pliss. I'm not sure the pronunciation of any of these names here, Gazan, Pliss, Mingwa, I don't know any of the pronunciations of their names, I might be getting it wrong, but anyways. So the Red Lotus is a splinter order, now led by Zaheer, the newly empowered airbender. Zaheer is a fervent reader of an ancient airbender poem specifically one of a man who untethered himself from earthly desires and was said to have never set foot upon the ground for the last few decades of his life, gaining such an intimate mastery of airbending that he never needed to step down on the ground again. Following this path, Zaheer seeks to find true connection with the elements and spirits, and though he could have been a powerful and strong ally to the side of Rava, he seeks to empower Vatu, and bring the two worlds crashing together again as one, which through many struggles and manipulations, as well as escalating power plays, ambushes, and anarchist attacks, eventually comes to pass. During harmonic conversion, the spirit and physical worlds are connected once again. Although there is one final piece of the puzzle here, Unalak, the chief of the Northern Water Tribe, an eventual anti-avatar, housing the spirit of Vatu inside him for the final battle. The one who pulled the strings behind the scenes when Zaheer openly caused anarchy. Gaining power and the position to act, he coaxes Korra into aiding their plans and whispers the idea of harmony with spirits to her, bringing her intense desire to protect the spirits into focus and even getting her to admit that she would want the two worlds to be one saying she believes Juan had made a mistake separating the two worlds. Unalak and Zaheer are two complicated characters that I cannot spend too much time focusing on if I wanted to tell you about the broader goals of the Red Lotus. So if there's interest, I will talk about Unalak in another video, but the power that he used to manipulate even Korra herself was a power known as Spirit Bending. Spirit bending is the power to manipulate the energy in a spirit itself, calming or agitating it. And as such, Korra was not just fighting Zaheer's anarchy, but Unalak's whispering of unity with spirits, and also having spirits clearly be upset and unhappy and needing to be helped by Korra. Korra being unaware that the distress was not caused by society, but by Unalak in secret using his spirit bending. After the final confrontation with the Red Lotus and all of its treachery, Korra still believed that Juan's decision was wrong to separate the spirit and physical world, and so the portals that connected them, one in the South Pole and one in the North, were left open, allowing the spirits to visit the physical world and the humans to go to the spirit world. The connecting portals that she was tricked into opening became one of her legacies, as well as the legacy of the Red Lotus, including Unlock, Zaheer, and the other members of the Splinter organization. A legacy does not divine between good or evil. It is simply that which remains. And as such, Unalak and Zaheer's intent and actions brought about great change, and those surviving members of the Red Lotus still seek to impose the will of Vatu onto the world and bring it under the reign of darkness and destruction. Well, that was as brief an overview of the Red Lotus as I can afford to give today. I do not know which day I will put this video up. I'm writing this now on the 17th of February. The video that I made that's supposed to go up at midnight tonight or the start of the 18th has already got a claim, and the second version just finished rendering right now, but it also might get a copyright claim, and if it does, this will be the 18th's video instead. So if you see this on the 18th, now you know why it's a bit shorter. I'm not exaggerating when I say this, but the video that I meant to go up for the 18th took 12 hours to upload to YouTube and then got claimed instantly. So now it's too late in the day and I'm trying not to rush this video, but as I said, tomorrow's video got a claim after 12 hours of uploading and the next version just finished rendering, but I doubt I'll be able to get it online by midnight because it's 
already 7 o'clock, so thanks for watching everyone. I'll definitely talk more about Avatar soon, and thank you Fried Egg for the suggestion of the Red Lotus. They were a perfect introduction because they require total knowledge of the Avatar world and are a perfect way to learn about it. Sorry I can't talk more about Unalak, Zaheer, and the other members of the Red Lotus, but each character might get their own video if this one does well. Rava, Vatu, the members of the Red Lotus, the White Lotus, the Four Nations, and the various bending abilities could all be videos if anyone has a particular favorite they want to know more about. Thanks for watching everyone. I'm gonna go record the audio right now before it gets too late and then try to get this online in the next few hours or maybe my other video will actually upload first and not get a second claim. In that case, I'll get more time tomorrow to work on this, but I'm not gonna leave it to chance. So leave this a like if you want more Avatar, Korra, or anything in that universe. Subscribe for daily videos, I make a new video every day, even if it takes over 24 hours of rendering and uploading. My computer's been on since 8 o'clock yesterday and it's 7.10 p.m. And when I say 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock a.m. yesterday. So yeah, I've almost hit yeah 36 hours of computer rendering and uploading. <laughs> but it's worth it for you guys. Leave any questions or suggestions in the comments below and I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Thanks for watching.